For step two, I'm old school and I still get nerdy pleasure out of sketching our symmetric half design by hand on graph paper. You may prefer to just print out a screen capture of the individual curves from your graphing software. That's fine too. Either way, we're going to start conceptualizing this as a single parametric curve and we want to establish our t values. If you're not yet familiar with parametric curves, the concept is not too tricky. Let's envision a little bug crawling along the perimeter of our design in this xy plane. Let me zoom in a bit here. The bug starts here at time t equals zero, and we're going to document the times at which the bug reaches each vertex. Let's say the bug takes one second to travel from each vertex to the next. Assuming t measures time in seconds, then we'd label the t values as t equals zero, t equals one, t equals two, t equals three, t equals four, t equals five, t equals six, t equals seven, t equals eight, and finally, just off the screen, t equals nine at the tip of the tail. For this activity, it doesn't really matter what t values we assign, so counting off t equals zero, one, two, three, four, five works perfectly well, and it is what I usually do. However, any other arbitrary choice of t values will also work just as long as they increase in value while we travel along the path. So just to prove that point, I'm going to reassign these t values t equals zero, t equals one, t equals three, t equals five, t equals eight, t equals 13, t equals 15, t equals 17, t equals 18, and just off the screen at the tip of the tail, t equals 21. I repeat, there's nothing special about these choices, and you could just as easily pick any other ascending values you desire. If I'm really concerned with modeling the motion of our fictional bug, my choice of t values clearly has some implications about how fast the bug is moving. With these new t values, it no longer takes just one second to move from one vertex to the next. Now the bug takes two seconds to go from here to here, t equals three to t equals five, and it takes three seconds to go from t equals five to t equals eight, and it takes five seconds to go from t equals eight to t equals 13, and so on. But our concern today is algebraically defining a curve, not worrying about the velocity of a bug. So let's just roll with these values. Even though it's not hard to read the x and y values off the axes, I do highly encourage you to draw or print out the design and write the x, y, and t values like I did here. I think it reduces careless errors later on. And that leads us to step three.